Planet Dolan. What company logo was drawn up in an hour by Salvador Dali, whose company logo was so successful they renamed the entire company after it? Here are 10 crazy stories behind some of the company logos you see every day. I'm Danger Dolan, and today I will be your narrator. Number 10. The logo for Domino's Pizza is a Domino. That much is, you know, obvious. But the store was originally named Dominic's and was simply a small local pizza place in Ypsilanti, Michigan. The place was renamed Domino's after a few years and they started opening franchises. The original idea was to add a dot to the logo each time the company opened a new franchise. They bailed on that idea after the third store opened, which is why there are only three dots on the logo now. Considering they opened more than 200 stores over the next decade, and now have 10,000 in place, that may have actually been the right call. Number 9. One of the most popular prevailing theories about the Apple name and logo is that it was a tribute to Alan Turing, the man widely known as the father of computer science. Turing is thought to have committed suicide by biting a cyanide-laced apple, hence the logo. But nope, it's actually none of that shit. Steve Jobs named his company Apple because he was in the middle of a fruitarian diet and thought the word sounded nice. The only reason for the signature bite out of the side is so that people wouldn't mistake the apple shape for a cherry. Number 8. Fun fact, the original Starbucks logo had titties, boob tubes, milk jugs. And they're perfectly serious, you can definitely see where the current logo originates here, but this is somehow more sexualized and, uh, you know, uglier. There's a reason for this though. The Starbucks siren is based on actual depictions of the ancient Greek siren, as they wanted a logo that represents Seattle's nautical theme. Of course, in Greek mythology, the siren represents addiction and obsession to the point of driving someone to their death. So, you know, it's basically uh, perfect for, for, for Starbucks. Number 7. Toyota was once known as Toyota in Japan, after the family that founded the company. But there is a superstition in Japan about business success based on the number of brush strokes required to write the name. Toyota required 10 strokes, which was considered unlucky. Toyota, however, required only 8, a number that represented prosperity. The modern logo involves three intersecting ovals, which the company says represents the overlapping hearts of the company and its customers. No. But the cool thing is that you can actually see every letter of the Toyota name in the logo. Number 6. NBC's famous Peacock logo came right around the time color television was being introduced. So they created a logo that took advantage to promote their color programming. The wonders and splendor of Technicolor. In our home there's color now. Wow! We own color TV. The Peacock logo originally featured 11 feathers when it was introduced in 1956. It wasn't until 1986 they redesigned it into the six feathered logo that they use today. Those six feathers represent the six branches of NBC. News, sports, entertainment, stations, networks, and productions. Number five. The logo for Chupa Chups, a famed Spanish lollipop manufacturer, is meant to symbolize a bright yellow daisy. It took about an hour at a cafe table to design the logo that has made Chupa Chups a worldwide brand. But the real story here is the man who designed this logo with random sketches on newspaper scraps. That man was world famous artist Salvador Dali, who was a good friend of the company's founder. Dali also had the idea to put the logo on the top of the sucker so that it would remain intact and visible, a marketing tactic that now defines the brand. Number 4. A common myth surrounding BMW's logo is that it's meant to look like a spinning propeller blade, a reference to the company's origins in making aircraft engines for German warplanes. It is true that the positions of the letters BMW are similar to the logo for Rap Motors, the aero engine company it grew out of. But the blue and white design has nothing to do with airplane propellers. It's based on the emblem for the Bavarian Free State. They had to reverse the order of the colors because it was, you know, illegal to use a national symbol for private commercial purposes. Number three. When the search for the famous Gerber baby began in 1928, the company running it wasn't called Gerber, it was called the Fremont Canning Company. They ran a contest for drawings and paintings of a baby to be the face for their new line of Gerber strained foods. Dorothy Hope Smith, the eventual winner, submitted an unfinished charcoal sketch with a note that said she would finish the drawing professionally if her drawing was accepted. 
The company accepted the drawing as is and told Smith they wanted no changes. The Gerber baby became so popular, it was the Fremont Canning Company's official logo. By 1931, the entire company had changed its name to the Gerber Products Company in 1941. Number 2. McDonald's Golden Arches seems straightforward enough. It's an M for McDonald's, right? Well, sure. But the design is actually a reference to what the original restaurants themselves would look like. The original restaurants had two massive golden arches over the entire building, holding up an overhang to provide shade and protection from the rain. That's what the logo originally represents. When McDonald's dropped the golden arch design from its restaurants in the 1960s, they kept the logo design partially because they liked the symbolism of a pair of nourishing breasts. Yes, that's, that's literally what they said. Number 1 Aside from the unmistakable castle, the most recognizable part of the Walt Disney logo is the Walt Disney signature. The problem is that's not Walt Disney signature, not even close. The stylized signature used in the Disney logo is based on what was thought to be his signature, based on autographed items sent out from the company. But Disney got artists to create a stylized signature for those items, rather than signing them himself. This was such a common practice that there are now more fake Disney signatures in circulation than real ones, and the company logo features one of them. So guys, which of these logo stories is the most surprising to you? Let us know what you think in the comments section down below, we'll pin our favourite to the top. That is it for this countdown, have a good one!